My daughter just this past week won one of her friend's softball players on the bus to the Lord. Coming home from Savannah after playing the game. And she calls and says, Daddy, I don't know what to do. She's that young in the Lord, but on fire with God. She's praying. And God's using her, and she don't even know what to do. Somebody shout, you ain't got to know what to do to be qualified. You just got to spend time with Jesus. I said, baby, don't you know how to pray? I said, you pray every morning. You pray all the time. Don't you know how to call on? Yeah, I do, Daddy. I said, well, grab her hand. She's already crying. The harvest is reaped. Yeah. Amen. It's there. She's crying. She's done run away. Her friends done run away from the friends at the back of the bus that's talking about demons and devils and sin. Come on, somebody. And her friends run to Brianna. Amen. Lord of God weeping. So she's ready. All you got to do, whoever calls on the name of the Lord to be saved. Romans 10, 13. Yeah. Times before I'd lead her through a prayer and let her pray, but I felt it was time she just she did it herself. Yeah. But I said that as an example. She didn't know what to do. But she'd been spending time with Jesus. Friend, calling on Jesus is the difference maker. Spending time with Him in prayer. He will use you. It'll blow your mind. And if you want to be used by God, that's what you've got to learn. The art of is coming to Him. Calling on Him. Notice what Jesus said to Matthew. Let's go on. Let me go back. Luke chapter 10, after verse 2 and 3, He said, the harvest is great. I ain't got enough of laborers. Uh, he said, so pray to me and I'll send you forth as the laborers into the harvest. Hallelujah. So we know prayer is the condition that must be met for God to use you. To send you into a harvest that's ready to be reaped. Uh, but then by verse 17 it said in the 70 returned unto joy saying even the demons are subject unto us through your power then Jesus said in verse 18 he said I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven verse 19 he said behold I give unto you power to turn on serpents on scorpions and of all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you the disciples had come back to him after being by two by two all 70 of them two by two were sent out by Jesus but you find them scriptures later in Luke 10 returning to Jesus coming back to Jesus full of joy talking about the devils that they had cast out in his name and Jesus is like so what I cast him out of heaven I'm the one that gave you the power to cast him out of people. Come on, somebody. And Jesus then just kind of concludes up, Behold, see this. I'm the one that gave you the power and I give unto you authority to tread on these devils, these serpents, uh, these scorpions. Come on, somebody. And over all powers of Satan himself, uh, amen, and nothing by shall any means hurt you or destroy you. Glory to God. In other words, Jesus said, uh, amen, I'm the one that gives you the power. So if you want to have the power continually, you got to come to me. Uh, and listen what they did. They returned in verse 17, uh, though he had sent them out uh, into the harvest uh, to reap a great harvest, uh, they didn't stay out there in the harvest always. Uh, they came back uh, to the Lord of the harvest. Uh, it was a continual, ongoing Hallelujah. schedule in their walk with him. Somebody say, come and go. You ever heard that thing? Come and go. In Exodus 30, no, Exodus, thank you, Lord. Exodus 3, verse 10, God told Moses, he said, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh. Somebody say, come, and I will send you to Pharaoh. In other words, if you'll come to me, I'll say, go from me. In Mark 16, Jesus is raised from the dead. He's telling them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 15. But in Luke 24, when you see these two writers... Mark and Luke, speaking of the same time frame, the same story, just a little bit different words, and some leave some things out and the other one puts some things in that the other didn't say. But it all gives us the total conclusion. When Jesus was saying, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16, verse 15. In Luke 24, verse 49, Jesus was also saying to the same ones he said to go, he said, go tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from upon high. The same Jesus that said to them, go, was the same one that said after he said, go, come. Come to Jerusalem and don't you go anywhere. Though I told you to go, don't you go anywhere but to prayer first. Get along with me. And for ten days they sought him until the day of Pentecost was fully came and they were in the same place and the same mind. And there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the place where they were assembled. Hallelujah. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spake with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Acts 2 verse 1. Hallelujah through 4. And if you'll back up to Acts 1 and 14 it said they continued in prayer both the men and the women. Somebody shout they continued in prayer. 
The reason Pentecost came was because somebody was laboring in prayer. The reason 3,000 souls got saved in one day is because somebody spent 10 days in prayer. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Because somebody, amen, heard the call to go, but heard the call to come above any call and came to where he was. Hallelujah. And got in that upper room, amen, and prayed and sought God. Holy Ghost filled them. And when Holy Ghost filled them, signs and wonders and miracles followed them. And it's still the pattern today. God don't work no different. Neither will He ever work any other way than this. You know, prayer began in Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. And it speaks of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve. He had a son named Enos. Enos's name in Hebrew means mortal flesh, frail, Weak is what it means in Hebrew. And it said, then begin men to call on the Lord. Somebody say, then, then begin men to call on the Lord. When Seth brought forth his son named Enos, whose name means mortal, weak, frail flesh, then people started calling on the Lord. Somebody say, prayer was born. Prayer was born. When mortal flesh was realized. When somebody whose name means frail, weak flesh was born, then prayer was also born. Because they realize without Him we can do nothing, John 15 and 5. They begin to realize it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, Zechariah 4 verses 6. When you realize you ain't nothing but flesh, you ain't nothing but mortal, weak, frail flesh, come on somebody, you realize you can't do this on your own, you realize without Him you can't do a thing, you're no match for the devil, that wicked one, without the person and presence of Jesus, come on somebody, you're not even a match for the ministry. Even the ministry will destroy you. The weight of it. Amen. If you don't spend time and minister to the one who gave you that ministry. That's when men begin to call on the Lord. Those that are full of pride. Come on. And full of self-conceit. Hallelujah. And think they're all that. It'll be hard for them to develop a prayer life. But those who develop a prayer life are those who say God. Hallelujah. I need you. And without you God I'll make a mess of things. Somebody shout, that's who calls on the Lord. That's who comes to God. Yeah. Not the late O.C. in church in Revelation 3 who said in verse 17, we have need of nothing. Wow. You realize our needs are designed to help us realize we need Him? Hallelujah. That's what prayer is in its simplest description. I need you. Hello. And it ain't about the, 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 qua, uh, the quantity of the time you spend. Some people stare at their clock the whole time they're praying until they can finish right on the dot. Come on, somebody. No, you, you can spend an hour with prayer and not even have spent 30 seconds with God. It ain't the quantity, it's the quality of the time you spend. God would rather you spend 15 minutes with Him, come on somebody, than five hours in prayer without Him. The Pharisees prayed, Luke 14. But here come old sinner man beating his chest saying, God be merciful unto me a sinner. I have sinned and he's full of repentance and he's humble before the Lord. And God said, listen to there. I'll hearken unto his prayer before I ever will that old peacock pie stiff neck. Come on somebody. Religious freak over yonder. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The Bible said in Luke 14 that the Pharisees prayed thus with themselves. They prayed with themselves. They prayed to be heard among themselves. They didn't have private time with God. Their time with God was always public to be seen and heard of men. And Jesus said, fairly, they have their reward. And it's that right there, Matthew 6. But verse 6 of Matthew 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet when you shut the door. Pray to your Father which is in secret. And your Father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Yeah. 